Alex here, and I am back with another weekly video to help you learn how to communicate more effectively. Now, today we're going to step through a makeover. And in fact, if you have been following this channel for quite some time, things are going to feel familiar. You may remember a few months ago where I shared a video where I talked about a helpful question, or rather a helpful test that you can do to determine, are your communications effective? And if the answer is no, give you a sense of what you need to change to get yourself there. Now today we're going to use that exact same test to help us improve another communication. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. All right, so I'm not gonna go through the ins and outs of the test, but rather if you wanna learn more about that, I'll link the first video in the description below. I'll also leave it for you to watch at the end of today's makeover. Now the test itself is simple. We're gonna start by looking away and then looking back and taking notice of where our eyes go first. Where do our eyes go next? How do we feel when we process this page? All of that information is crucial. So let's go ahead and do the test together. In a moment, I'm going to go ahead and put it up in this, on the screen. I'll prompt you, but I'm curious where are your eyes drawn when you look at this slide? Now I've done this test a handful of times just in preparation for today's video. And I found that each time my attention was first drawn to the logo in the top right corner. It's probably because this logo is a bold color and it's in a prominent place. Now I should mention that this example I'm sharing with you today, it's based on a real world example, just anonymized things to protect the innocent, if you will. But my attention was first drawn to this logo. Then I saw a similar orange color in my peripheral vision. So I looked over to the left-hand side of the slide. From there, my attention went to the graph and it is nearly impossible for me to tell you what happened next, at least with any level of precision. My eyes went up, they went down, they traced along the spikes that were happening in the data. They bounced between the bars. It was almost like my eyes were playing a ping pong match inside this chart something that shouldn't happen. And only after I processed the graph did my attention finally go to the text at the top where I could read through what the point of this slide was. So I wanna take this map of where my eyes were drawn and see what I can learn from it. So first things first, my attention should not go to the logo or the slide template design first, right? These are supporting elements, not the main message. So I might want to rethink how I design this slide in the future, recognizing that oftentimes we can't touch company branding, but perhaps there's a healthy compromise to be made. Second, all of those bouncing lines that are going on in the chart, this should not happen. So I want to consider, well, how could I streamline this chart to make it easier to process? So I'm gonna make some changes to the visual itself. And then finally, just wanna think about the overall visual hierarchy of the slide. I don't love that my attention went to the text last because this is where I gather all the information to make sense of this slide. So I want this to be the first thing that draws my attention. So we're gonna step through how I'm gonna make each of these changes. And because we have a lot going on here, I want to actually segment our focus. We'll start first by improving the graph and then we'll bring it all together with a slide. So let's go ahead and jump straight in by focusing first on our graph. I'm going to make a handful of changes here just to clean things up. I'm going to start by stripping away any unnecessary elements like the border and the grid lines. I'm also going to just take away those colorful annotations for now. We'll add that back in later, but we'll focus first on the structure of the graph. Speaking of the structure, I want you to bring your attention to the vertical axis, All right? Things are looking a little off here. So first thing I wanna do is just to add some guidelines or some structure to that axis. So I wanna add an axis line, some tick marks, make it clear what the axis range is. I also wanna address the fact that the axis title is super tiny and it makes it hard to read. I'm gonna make that font bigger and thus I'm gonna to have to make that title a little bit pithier. All of those changes are going to look like this. If I think back to the original, one of the challenges with the graph is just that we had so much information crammed into a small view. 
So I want to think about how I can gain more space back. And one way to do that is to adjust the vertical axis range. Go from 10 to 60% to zero, all the way to 100%. Notice how I have so much more space now around my data. Now that I've cleaned up my vertical axis, I want to bring my attention down to the horizontal axis. I'm going to make a lot of similar changes here, where I'm going to make these labels bigger, easier to read. And I can do that by pulling the year out, which gives me the space to then put those monthly abbreviations flat along the axis. Final change I will make to the outside of my graph is just to format that title. So I'm going to go from center alignment here to left alignment. And I'm going to make that title bigger, a darker gray. That way it commands more attention. Also just added in some more descriptive text so that when you're looking at the graph, you know exactly what you're meant to see. Now that we have a pretty good structure in our graph, we can bring our attention to the data. And if I think back to the original, the data itself was almost fading to the background because there were so many other elements competing for attention. So I want to make sure that the data is more prominent in my final view. And I'm going to do that by just thickening up those lines, making them more attention grabbing. I'm also going to adjust the graph size. And there's a completely understandable desire whenever you put a graph in a slide to want to stretch it to fill all of the space. But I'm going to encourage you to resist the urge to do that. Recognize that white space is your friend. And so one way to gain back some more white space here is just to resize this graph. Benefit here is that now I can take those labels that are in the legend at the bottom and add them directly to the graph, labeling the lines directly. We have a pretty good graph here. So I'm going to go ahead and add back in those colorful annotations. And I'm warning you because it's going to feel like a lot. There we go, we have our colorful annotations and it feels like all of the work that we have just done is lost. And that's because these colorful annotations are competing for attention with the data. So we wanna push them visually to the background and we can do that by just reducing the amount of color on those bars. Can also consider, well, maybe I don't need bars. Maybe I could just reduce their footprint by using lines. I formatted the text when I did this so that we no longer have italic text that is in a black color, but rather we are using a darker gray. I've, and I've also aligned the text so that we have an overall cleaner feel here. Now, when we look at the data and we think back to what the main message was, right? The goal was to communicate to someone that despite all of these moments happening throughout the year, sentiment across employees has stayed relatively flat. Now we can see that because there hasn't been much of a shift here, right? We have an overall flat line across all four of these uh, different levels. Challenges is that when we focus on the data, it's hard to do, right? Those colors, the overlapping lines, it feels busy. So one way to gain more space could be to aggregate, only to show the total sentiment across all levels, or if it's important to preserve this level of detail, maybe we physically separate these lines, right? So we pull them apart. And I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna group things a bit. So I'm gonna show the leadership team versus the sentiment for those that are not on the leadership team. It's gonna look like this. Notice the amount of space around my data. Benefit is, is that now I can add things back into my graph, like labels, like data markers, just to help convey that yes, things have been flat when we compare where we were at the start of 2020 to where we are today in May. Go ahead and do a quick pulse check here. Just compare where we started to where we are now with our graph. And you can imagine that if we did that where your eyes drawn test, how your answers would differ dramatically for the original view on the left compared to the one that we've just worked through here. Now I mentioned that we are going to compartmentalize our makeover here, right? So we focused on the graph. Let's go ahead and consider the slide now. So I'm gonna substitute in the graph. Already this feels lighter. But there were a few other changes we wanted to make, like the fact that our attention shouldn't go to that brand logo. And there's not much we can do to change a brand logo, but we could consider where we put it. 
Instead of putting it at a prominent attention grabbing place at the top, I might consider moving it down. Still has the overall same feel to this slide, but isn't commanding as much attention. It also gives me the space to then take that takeaway sentence at the top, make it pithier, make it larger so that that sentence does in fact command attention. And just because we've created so much white space or an overall lighter feel to this slide, we can also get away with adding more text into that descriptive paragraph at the top, painting a more robust picture for somebody who's never looked at this data before. So helping drive deeper understanding. And again, if we do another check, where are your eyes drawn? Comparing where we started to where we finished, notice the difference here. And we've done all of that by just asking a simple question. Where are your eyes drawn? Where do they go next? And using that information to determine, well, did we design something that is effective or not? So if you enjoyed today's makeover, I'm gonna recommend you check out these two videos here. They also share helpful tips and tricks so that you can design more effective communications. And if you enjoyed this style of video, I encourage you to let us know in the comments down below so that we can share even more content with all of you. My name's Alex and I'll see you next time.